So today we will speak about uh, Python intermediate. That is, that is, right now our starting point is that you should have uh, basic knowledge uh, with three uh, really good hours in classroom and three hours in the lab about basic knowledge of Python. So you should be able to create a Python program from scratch, a simple Python program may maybe, but you should be able. Obviously, for realizing your project in this course, you will need something more than these three hours we uh, did in the, in the classroom and in the, in the lab. And you have to realize a system, an application, something bigger than a simple uh, to-do list uh, ordered by item name or something like that. But uh, the good news is that for realizing this application, all the project uh, can use this, you can, like I said here, stand on the shoulder of giants. So you don't have to write everything from scratch, but you can reuse things. You can use libraries, packages, other frameworks, and so on, that are available by other developer, developers to you. And Today we will start this, uh, uh, an example of this uh, Python intermediate interfacing Python with other libraries, other pieces of code made by other developer with uh, an example, a practical example. And in looking for libraries from framework for packages and so on, to integrate in your own uh, application on your system, it could be always useful to use the KISS principle if possible, KISS stands for keep it simple stupid. That is not stupid you, but simple stupid, it's uh, a couple of words. And you can integrate uh, a library and packages to provide more functionality, more algorithms, and so on, to your own program. We briefly saw uh, math operation in the standard Python library, but you can also have more complex mathematical operation if needed, uh, statistical packages, uh, interfaces towards the operating system, and so on. And also libraries and packages to integrate uh, cloud or web services, like weather or the social network, social networks, or uh, IoT devices, like in this course, And in Python, to integrate other packages, typically you have to install them in your computer and then import them in your application. So Python module can be installed outside the uh, PyCharm IDE with the pip command, pyp install name of the package. So um, for example, on the command line, you can uh, write, let me open a bigger window. You can write pipe or pipe tree, depends, and install, and the name of a package, a Python package to install. We will see two Python packages today to install in our example application that you will also continue on the lab on Monday. So you can install here, pipe install name application, and this uh, package, this library will be available for the entire operating system. So every program in Python can use this uh, application you install in this way. Or you can do the same thing um, in uh, PyCharm, and we will see briefly after. And you can also learn more about PyP on this website if you want the full documentation of the command tool. PyCharm 
behind the graphical interface use this same program to install packages and libraries. So in the end, you all, you most time use will use PyP. So today, to try interacting, interfacing with other libraries, we will uh, use an example. We will use Telegram. How many of you have Telegram? Okay. Uh, so if you want, here, in, to the, towards the end of this classroom, you can also try and interact with our bot. We will create a simple bot in Telegram that should do three things. In Python, obviously. Simple, because there are more complex, more elegant way to do the same application that we will realize today. We will keep it simple just for, uh, I can say, demo purpose or lecture purpose. And the bot should be great as, so when the bot starts, it should say, it should say hello, basically, and then acts as a textual parrot, an eco service. So we will write something and then he will re reply with the same word. So we will write hi and he will reply hi and something like that. And then we will realize the same application, the same function, but by receiving a voice uh, message instead of a textual message. So we will write uh, something, the, the something word, and we will receive a voice message that will say something as an mp3 file, basically. So this is our goal. The uh, uh, Telegram bot is called, we will call, is called MEI bot with a great fantasy and uh, it will be something that will be put in the middle between us and the Telegram service. So a few words, uh, what is a Telegram bot? Do you know what is a Telegram bot? Everyone of you? Nobody of you? How many of you know what a Telegram bot is? Okay, so briefly, it's a third party application that can run inside Telegram. So you can use Telegram to interact with this bot in a similar way uh, in which you use Telegram to interact with another real person. And user can interact with bots by sending messages, commands, and inline requests. We will focus on the first two, where messages are free text messages, free or free voice messages, images, videos, and so on, unstructured text. Commands are, you can say, special operation that start with a backslash symbol. And developers can create their bots, control their own bots using the Telegram bot API or some dedicated libraries. So you can call the API the web API of Telegram or use some Java, Python, C Sharp, whatever uh, API that is provided by Telegram or by other developers. Uh, and you can discover more about Telegram bots at this address in which you will see core Telegram. Bots. You, where you can see what can you do with a, a bot, uh, um, how they works, how you create a bots, and etc., etc., etc. So, how we will create a Telegram bot? So, first of all, we need to ask to a special bot to create uh, our bot. This special bot is called uh, Botfather. So if you look on Telegram, uh, you can find a bot called uh, Botfather that will help you to set up and create a new bot. Mm -hmm. uh, for a new bot, it will ask you for a name that is not unique in, inside Telegram. So I choose, for example, MEI bot and a username 
that must be unique for the entire Telegram service and must end in bot, underscore bot or just bot with the capital B, it's okay. And I choose MEI 2018 underscore bot because MEI underscore bot was already taken. And then Botfather will give you some information. You can change name, you can delete uh, the bot, something like that. But especially it will give you two things. The first one that is the most important thing is a token to use the Telegram API. That is, you are authorized, you can effectively act as that bot write a program that reply to that bot request. And then a Telegram link, a short link to open the bot and to spread that link to your user, to your friends, so that they can start speaking with this bot. So how will our bot work from a very, very high perspective? So we will have at certain point the HEMI bot implementation that will run on my computer. So right here. And then somewhere in the world we will have some people like you that, is you, that are a Telegram user, normal Telegram user. And then we have the Telegram service on the internet. So the bot sometimes ask for update to the central Telegram service. It say, please, if you have any news for me, send me that news. That news could be a new user wants to interact with you, or a new user send you a command, or a new user send you a message. So when a user starts the conversation with the MEI bot, after a certain time, a brief time, a short time, the bot will get the start message, the start command from the user. And he can reply, he prepare the, the, the rest, the answer, and he'll greet the user, send the communication to Telegram that will forward it to the right user everywhere it is. So the user can get the greetings. And then if the user send a text, voice, whatever type of message to Telegram, after, again, a brief time, the MEI bot will continue to ask periodically uh, to Telegram, do you have any news for me? Do you have any update for me? And so on. The Telegram API service, at a certain point, will, you will get to the MEI bot the new message from the users. It will, the MEI bot will uh, interpret the message and send the response that, in our case, is the same message that the user will send. And so he will send the response to Telegram and Telegram, we will forward it to the user on his device. So this is more or less how it works. Obviously, if my computer is, the program on my computer is turned off or Telegram as a service is not working, this thing doesn't work. And if the user is not interacting actively with the Telegram and the bot, obviously nothing happens. It's just stay, the Telegram bot stay here, there, to listen for any update from Telegram. And it, it will not get anything, probably. So I will uh, interact with this main here Telegram API on the internet. We can implement the API the raw API, let's, let's call it in that way, the raw API or use some libraries. Telegram does not provide you with any official libraries for creating uh, a bot. However, in the page that I close, it should uh, here have some, they call it code example. It has a list of API in various languages. 
PHP, Java, Node.js, Python, other languages, and so on. So we are obviously interested in these Python libraries in this course. And out of these four libraries, I will, let, let's imagine that the four library is, does not exist because it's uh, on a single library, it's quite, uh, it's particular as a library. The other three standard simple library are these three. The Python Telegram bot library that has a GitHub repository. The Telepot uh, library that again has a GitHub repository and this bot API um, library that has a GitHub repository. And these links are the same that are reported here on the Telegram website. So in this case, we have Telegram that provides no official library. If Telegram provided an uh, official library, probably it will be better to use the official library because it will be maintained, updated directly by Telegram and not by third party, like, uh, such in this case. But in this case, we have three recommended library. Uh, last year, for example, the first one, the Python Telegram bot was not recommended by Telegram, but was really, really widely used in, if you look for Python Telegram bot library on, on Google, 90% of the time you will see this one. So even if it's not the first one, even if it's not recommended, it was not recommended by Telegram, it was really, really widely used. So typically, if you have official library, check that. Uh, otherwise, look for the recommended library, but also have a look on Google just searching on Google, if there are other libraries that are widely used. So these three libraries, let's open that. Yeah, not here. The one, two, and three. These three libraries, okay. We, we need to just choose one of that. How we perform the choice? To you. Which library do you, will you choose? Telegram or recommend all of three? It's up to you. Choose, we can say the best one for you. So which criteria we can use for choosing one of that? There is Probably no uh, right or wrong answer in this case, so please. I don't know, how, how long is the name? How do you, will you choose one of these? The first one, because it's the first one in the order, and, and any other criteria? <laughs> Just by looking or the name, it's really difficult, but what can we look, for example, in these repositories or in the documentation of this library for hints about which is better for us, for example? How many stars do they have? So how the community reacted to this library? That is a possible criteria. A possible criteria, yes. On the functionalities that will cover, yes. A good criteria. Because the, the Telegram API evolved in time. So maybe Two things. First one is the, the Telegram API evolved in time, so you can have uh, uh, more functionality in your version of the API. So, the, how many, what is the last update with respect to the API, and how many functionality the library has, and how many functionality do we need from this library? Because maybe we need something really, really minimal, and we don't want to take a library with 1,000 functionality for just to using one because we don't really need the other 90, 999 functionality right now or forever. Otherwise, if we need a large uh, set of functionality, we can look for the most functional complete library. 
and this is another criteria. So I will use this more or less in this criteria. I will add uh, other four criteria, three. The last one is more or less uh, included in the last criteria that your colleague said. That is, how many of you su support Python 3? How many of them support Python 3? Because maybe some library are for Python 2 only, and we are working with Python 3. So they cannot be used probably immediately in our project. So all of them support Python 3. Good. How many of them are available or pay IP? So in this case, all of them are available. And if they have some sort of documentation, because you know, if you have just this, how can you use this library? These are files. Then I will import in my program and what I can do with this. I don't know right now. So if they have some uh, documentation, like for example here, here it says documentation link. So it has some sort of documentation in a human readable way in their intention, probably. And the third, the fourth criteria is they are maintained. So if one library was created three years ago and nobody cares, last update three years ago probably is not a good choice for a library if we, if we have some alternatives. So the other uh, criteria that I used is uh, like you, commits, starts, forks, watches on GitHub hmm, to have the sense of the community, starts, forks, and watches, and also to have a frequency of uh, update. So if they have frequent commit or they have just one commit three years ago and one commit yesterday and nothing in the middle or something like that. And if, if in this documentation they have example, we to, to get started, you need the example. Other than the entire documentation, 1,000 pages of documentation to read. Just a, some example to get started. And uh, uh, probably a quite new version of the Telegram API. So I just excluded this uh, bot API because it has no example available. And it has also a slightly older version of the API with respect to other two. And Moreover, if we see in the star, this bot API has 31 watches and 2,030 stars. This telepot has 1,846 stars, so way more. And the Python Telegram bot has 4,000, so four times the previous library, stars. And this one was updated 20 days ago. Um, the Telepot library was updated one month ago, so more or less there. And the, the other one was updated six months ago. So we can exclude this one for all this reason. No example, uh, no frequent update, few uh, community response and so on. From the other two, I will choose uh, after reading the reference, example, and so on, the first one because it's just simple to, to use, immediate to get started with this one. Oh, the other is a good alternative. This one looks more simple, looks simpler to, to use and implement in your project for what we need today and in the lab, probably. So this Python Telegram bot uh, is at the version 10.0.0.0.1 and it supports Python 2.7 up to Python 3.6 and, and so on. It's also a Telegram group for um, requests and support. It's open source and, and so on. It has uh, instruction how to install that. PyP install Python Telegram bot, the uh, upgrade, um, Parameter is for upgrading, installing and upgrading an existing version of the library on your computer. Or you can also install it from source, but 
we can just install with PyP. And uh, there is also a tutorial for get started. So how to create uh, in the Python command line uh, a Telegram bot. So we will not create on a Python command line. We, we told you what, what a Python command line is. No, no, it's a valid response. Yes, no. A Python, Python is a, um, if you open the, the terminal or the command prompt, it's the same. Again, this one. Uh, if and you type py, Python 3, you have a command line. So here, you can write Python five, Python variable, five, Python function, you, Python code directly. So if I write print uh, uh, hello, it will print hello. It's an interactive mode for experiment, quick experiment with Python. So also here you can import uh, math, for example, and then say print uh, uh, math.py and we'll print pi and so on. So it's a quick interactive way to experiment with Python and with Python libraries. And then you type quit and you quit from this uh, interactive mode. So Python 3 and Python 2 as this interactive mode. So we will not use that. Uh, this example are from the interactive mode, but for example, the from Telegram, import updater, and the other lines, you can copy and paste these two lines in a Python program, in a Python script, in a text editor in PyCharm, and then run it uh, like every other Python program without the, the, the three major signs that you see before, obviously. So let's start to create this uh, with this library and uh, just a comment that I already did, but uh, we have two types of uh, messages in Telegram and in this library, common messages and non-command messages. Common messages start with the other slash uh, and they have uh, a word that you like, start, edit, something, add token, add text, whatever you want. Start is uh, a reserved command, and this is the command that it executed when you start a conversation. It's automatically executed when you start a conversation or you start a bot on your on the user device. Non-command messages are free text slash video slash audio slash whatever messages. So not command are free message. And we want to send in our application a greetings a first greetings with the start command message, while we want to perform the e-cooperation with every non-command messages. We want to take the message we receive in a non-command mode and get back to the user the same identical message. And for now, we will concentrate on a textual message. So let's start with the first step. That is, let me remind you, we want to create a bot that greets us and act as a textual parrot by sending back the text whatever we write. So a textual echo. Not a vocal echo right now, just the first tube step. So we can, at this point, open uh, PyCharm that is here and create a new project that I will call Python Intermediate as, as usual I can create a new file a new Python file and I will call it uh, MEI bot uh, uh, text.py. 
because we want to realize the textual version of the bot, of the eco. Okay. So here, the first thing we need to do is install these um, packages and then import it in our program. So to install something, you should go in the properties and in the project interpreter sheet of the, pro the preferences of your project. So right now I am in project Python intermediate, it is the name of the project in project interpreter. Here you can add here with install any packages that is available on PIP or on your computer. Here you see the packages available on, already installed on your computer with the possibility to upgrade here if needed or to install a new um, package. The package is called Python Telegram bot. So I will type here Python Telegram bot. That is version number 10.0.1, like in the website, so it's the latest version. And then I can, I, I selected this and can install the package. It will told me packages here. Packages installed successfully, installed the package Python Telegram bot. So I can close this and I will see here this Python Telegram bot package. That is in, it needs the latest version. And you may notice also that he installed some dependencies. The, this certify package was not present here and this future package was not present here, but and probably also the nose it was not present here, I don't remember, but the first two are dependencies that are required by a Python Telegram bot. So you installed Python Telegram bot and, and he, it will get also all its dependencies automatically in the right version, in the version that works with that version of the library you installed. Then you can press just okay, and you can start using the, 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 the library, the packages. So, um, so let's start with um, a main function. So this is something that you maybe have seen in the lab, but we can show you here. and def main, uh, def main. Okay, do you know what is this if name equal equal underscore underscore main underscore underscore and so on? It should be in the solution of the lab the first and the second lab. It's, I, when we spoke about Python, I told you that Python is not a main function, right? Yes, no. Yes. Uh, and that when you import a Python, lab, a Python file, you import everything in that, from that file and that you can use it in your own program. This is true in general. This instruction is the, I can say, equivalent of a main function. That it, it say that everything that is under this line should not be imported from other packages, but should only be used when you launch a program. So it acts at the same effect of a, of a main function. If you run this program, it will run the main function that is declared before. So everything that is here, every variable you put here, 
is not visible from importing package but executed only when you run this program. So everything that is under this if name equal equal main is the starting point from your running program. So in this way we are saying that when the program is run from the command line, from the run button here, when you run the program you have to look this if name main and then execute the main function. No matter what is written before that line, the first thing you have to do is to execute the main function. That right now is empty, but we will start to put something inside. So the main function, we can start the main function with uh, um, uh, some documentation. That is, for example, I don't know, uh, MEI bot uh, will repeat uh, everything uh, you type. Type. So the description of what this function will do. And if we, if we look at the tutorial that is here, it said that you have to create, to import from telegram.axt updater and uh, create this updater project with a token. That is the token that is provided by uh, Telegram when you create a, a bot. So uh, we need to do these things. This updater is who is responsible of this red orange line, the one that check for update from the main Telegram pro, uh, service. So this updater automatically asks the Telegram API, do you have any update? Do you have any update? Automatically, continuously, over time. Up to the program is stopped. So, therefore, we need to uh, just copy and paste these I will write here, so from telegram.xt uh, import uh, updater. So I can I import that, so I can use, uh, I can create a, like in the tutorial, a variable that's called updater, and I will create this updater telegram with the token. So, so since I've don't, I don't want that token will be um, online on YouTube forever, um, since I forgot to open Telegram before, I just opened here, I created, let's see if I can, no. Um, I got a go on Botfather and I created a new bot yesterday and Godfather so if you have Telegram and you, you look for MEI 2018 underscore bot you should find a bot that is called MEI bot and you can open that and this bot has a token that I will try to copy and paste No, no, that is, uh, then I will cancel this token after the classroom. Seven, three, three, eight, nine, four, six. I will make 1,000 errors. So this short sequence is the token that is provided by Telegram that I hopefully brought right, five, six, seven, Three three eight nine 
for 6 AAHTC, 7 XKEQ. And, okay, so this is the token, I will put this one, so we have this updater, and so right now we just, if we run this, we just start this program and we ask for one update to the Telegram service and, and, and stop, so we will not able to, to handle anything. We need to perform two other, uh, we need to start the, the token, the updater, that is updater.start polling, that is this continuous request for information. So we create the object with the token and then we start this continuous request. And since we want to get intercept the start command, we need to register a command handler. So something that is able to handle our start command. That is a function. We will create a new function here that we call start, for example. This start function will create, will, we will use, we will put here in the start function the code for handling the start message from uh, Telegram. And uh, so, to create a command handler, we need to create another object. If you look at the documentation, it's there. It's called a dispatcher. It is something that takes all the messages and then dispatch to the, to the right command handler or to the right non-command handler, because you may have the start command handler, but you can also have the add text command handler or the edit edit command handler, whatever you want command handler. And so we need to dispatch the right message to the right handler. So you need to, uh, first of all, get the dispatcher from the updater object. And uh, on that dispatcher, that's called DP, you can add an handler. That is, this um, method here will require one uh, two parameters. The first one is without default. The second one that is group is by default to default group that is just okay for, for us. And we need to create a command handler that is the command handler for start because the command, the command that the user may type is start, is slash start and the name of the function that will handle this command. So we are saying that this uh, start, so when the user wrote something like this, the program will call a, method, a, a, a function that is called start. And we tap here. So you notice that this command handler is in red because we needed to import command handler in our application. So you say unresolved the reference. So we can or just work here with this more or just type here command handler. So it will import from telegram.ext the command handler and uh, um, so that, we, that this, uh, this row is uh, uh, valid without any error. So right now we have to write something here. So what happens right now? We have a bot, when it run, we have a bot that check if this token is valid, and hopefully yes, with the Telegram online service. Then it open a dispatcher to handle different command uh, messages and non-command messages. And we have just one command messages. When we receive the start command messages, we will call, we will execute the content of the start function over there. 
The start function, since it is a command handler, has two parameters. One is the bot, and the other is the message hmm? uh, that we receive and we can reply to. So, since we want to greet the user, when we start the bots, we can say update dot message, since we want to prepare a new message, dot reply text, and the message that will be our answer, our reply. So, when the the user will press start, will type start, it will execute this command handler that again will call the start function and the start function will create, will fill up uh, an object that is update with the message to reply that is hello. So the user will receive on their smartphone, on their computer, the hello string. So this is the first part that is the uh, greetings. So, any one of you has a telegram on your something and it want to experiment with this? So, let me, I will start this. So, it starts, it does nothing. If the token is wrong, it will print here, not, not authorized. So, who is the tester? Who wants to act as tester? <laughs> it works, okay. <laughs> At the end we will try the entire, maybe I stop the, 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 the video recording and we will try from this computer. And, okay, so I, it works, trust him, and uh, um, so let's continue and let's do the non-common part. The non-common part works really, really simple to that one. So we have a command handler for the common part and we need a, a non-common handler for handling everything else. So we, just as we, add this handler, we need to add another handler that in this time will not be a command handler, but it will be a non-command handler that is a message handler in Telegram. We need, as before, to import message handler. And message handler, similarly as before, has two parameters. The second one is the function to call. In the command handler, we'll start here. We can call it uh, uh, echo, for example. So this second parameter is yeah is the name of the function to start, that is echo, and the first parameter is the type of message that is uh, accepted by this message handler. We want to uh, accept textual messages, so we need to type filters.text. So we need to, in all the types of messages supported by Telegram that are in this filter variable, we need to take the textual only. There is filter dot, uh, I don't remember, voice or sound, something like that. There are various type of filters. We just need the text one. And we need to import these uh, filters like we did before. So from here, uh, filters. So, for example, filters should have uh, audio as a type of filter, a contact, document, game, or something like that. So, it will call this message handler, in this case with a textual message incoming, 
but if you have a document, it will call that, that message handler when you have a document incoming from the user towards your bot. So, in this way, we are interested, right now, we are interested in uh, uh, textual. Um, let me add this line that is updater.idle that say uh, work up to, because I added this line because here, no, here. When we stop the program, it will get us this error because I just stopped the program. This updater.idle will avoid this error message, basically. It will handle the stop of the program, of the bot. So message handler, the eco function, the eco function is here, then we need to, um, <clears throat> we need to um, just take the message we get from the user and reply back with the same identical message. So the eco function has, as before, two parameters, uh, bot and uh, update, like before, and here, um, to reply with the message, like before, we have to say update.message.reply text, and then here we need to, to put the text we just received for a clear code. Let me say create a variable that I call it a repeat text. And, uh, and the message is from update.message.text. So from update.message.text, we get the message we receive, so the user send to us, that us is the bot, and then we take the message that the user send, we'll put it in a variable, and then we will reply with the content of the same variable. The same content is stored here. There is an alternative way that is way longer, that is writing bot.send um, message uh, and so on. That is the equivalent, but is way longer to write. Uh, the equivalent of update.message.reply text. And uh, let's add uh, one thing that will make our bot uh, a little bit more human, that is, so right now, if you run this, you write something and the bot will reply with something. But as you know, if you use Telegram, in someone else write, you see that the user named one, two, three is writing the message. So you see that the user is writing before receiving the message. So we can simulate the same behavior by saying that the bot is writing and then the bot will send you the message. So uh, we, this is a bot. Uh, yeah. This is a method in bot that is send a chat action. Um, And we need to import from Telegram, this time import uh, chat action. This send chat action will need two parameters. Okay. Uh, the first one is the ID of the chat, of the current conversation to write uh, uh, the bot is typing to the right user, to the right person, that we can take this information from update, the update variable as before, uh, update message dot chat ID. And uh, then we need the chat action. That is, uh, uh, you, see, you see a lot of action, mm. record audio, record video, typing, that is the user, is the bot in this case is typing, and we will use typing in this way, in this case. So, right now we have just completed our first step. We have a greetings, 
that will send hi, and then for every message it will get it, it will type, it will show typing, and then it will um, get the message and reply with the same message. Um, Here, obviously, you can add all the command and message handler you want. So you can have here, after the start message, for example, add handler uh, command handler, I don't know, help, that we call the help function. So if, if the bot will receive a help, command, it will call a different um, function. So the difference is the start message is automatically sent when you start the first time the conversation with the bot, while the help um, message, you, you should, the user should explicitly write slash help to see that. To see also here that it works before that uh, we can write something. Uh, let's do it this way. Print, if it works, repeat text. And uh, print, uh, hello. Just to, to see that something also here. So I will run this again. And there are a lot of people that uh, is trying this bot, probably. And right? No. <laughs> so someone is writing that things there, or it wrote before when the program was stopped. So we can try. Where is our tester? Let's try something, yeah, okay. <laughs> Enough. Uh, that is a message for the teacher. I will stop this. So please stop, try, stop writing. Um, I stop this, okay. Um, so this is the first step. The second step is uh, This one. Uh, the second step is, uh, so we want to have the same function, but with a voice message. So we need to take the uh, enough message you just sent before and create a voice message. My, the bot should create a voice message with that, uh, um, with a text to speech module, I would say, and then we'll send back the uh, voice message with enough in, as a message. To do that, uh, we can use another library because it's the, the interface in Python, Python Intermediate Lecture, that is uh, uh, which library do we use for doing that. So online services exist to convert uh, text to speech. Uh, operating system level services exist. So for example, we have Google text-to-speech, we have voice, RSS, all online free services that take some text and will give you a, a audio file. And we will use a Python package that is a wrapper for the Google text-to-speech uh, function that is this uh, GTTS that is available on PIP and take some text, use the Google text-to-speech API and returns a mp3 file, and you will to send the mp3 file to the user. So we'll take the text, we'll send it through this library to the Google text uh, to speech API. It, the, that service will give us a mp3, mp3 file, and we will send this voice message to the user. So yeah. let's do this. So, First of all, we need to install the, the GTTS Google Text to Speech um, package. In this case, we have four 
packages with similar name, we just need the Z, the Google, the, the, the simple one, not the first, the GTTS um, package. Hmm? This version one, two, dot two, dot two. So as before, we install the package and we wait and then package is installed successfully. So we can close this. And you see, you may see that here we have a lot of other libraries that were automatically added, like for example, requests, this one, or uh, six, or you have lib3. All these other libraries that are dependencies from this Google text-to-speech uh, package. So as before, it will get all the needed um, libraries. So we installed this and let me close this and copy. copy. Just to have a different, let's call it MEI bot voice, just to have a different file. We need to uh, maintain everything uh, in the same identical way. We don't need to change anything in the main function because we need, again, a start command handler, a textual filter because we want to get text and we will reply with audio, but we will get text from the user. And so we need to change this echo function mainly. So I will uh, delete this, this line right now. So let's start from the chat action. We are not typing as a bot. We are uh, recording audio. So we need to select another chat action that maybe is uh, or record audio or upload audio. Let's select upload audio. That is more realistic because we effectively upload an audio file to the Telegram service. We get an MP3 file and then we'll, we'll upload it. So then we need the text as before. We can print it or not, maybe not. And then we need to convert the textual message message uh, into an mp3 file and then we need to send the message back hmm? the audio message back so to convert uh, the textual message we need to we need to we install the package and we need to to import that package. So as before, from the name of the package, import, in this case, with the GTTS, with this uh, capital and this camel case, we can say similar camel case uh, way. So we need to import that. So here we can use the service to convert the text and get an MP3. To get the text, we need to use the GTTS uh, constructor that get uh, um, that require at least two parameters. The first one is the text to convert, and the second one is the language of the text to convert. Because Google Text to Speech API works not only for English but also for other languages. So we will send an English text it will try to convert using an English voice, otherwise with an Italian voice or something like that. So uh, here we have an English um, text, hopefully, and we will try to have an English text. So ciao mamma is not... Um, so text equal to repeat text. As before, we take the text from the user and we will um, send it to the to the service, and then we have a lang equal um, en 
that is the language of that specific test and of the voice um, converter, text-to-speech service to use. And then we can put this in a variable and we need to just save this uh, object somewhere on the disk of my computer, in this case. I will save just here in the, in the same directory and we can call it uh, um, echo.mp3. So we don't have to specify which uh, audio format we will need because by default we will give us, it will give us a mp3 file. So just save it uh, somewhere. And then we have the, hopefully, the, um, <clears throat> the voice message and we can send it back. We cannot use the update.message.reply text uh, function as before because this is not a text anymore and the update.message is not a uh, update uh, reply voice or reply audio function. We need to use the longer version of that uh, command that is bot.send um, voice in this case, not send text. And as for the chat action, we need to specify the chat ID, that is, the bot is sending this to a specific user, because, you know, many users can connect the contemporary on the, in the same time, in parallel with the same bot. And so we have uh, the chat, uh, like before, update dot message dot chat ID, and then we have the voice message to, to send back. And the voice message is a file to be open on our file, on our program, like we did uh, before history and in the lab. So open, the open function from Python. Uh, open, the name of the file to be open, echo.mp3, and the uh, mode in which we want to open this file. In which mode do we, do we want to open this file? Read, and it's not enough. Because read open a textual file, and this is not a textual file. This is a binary file, so we need to have RB, where the B stands for binary. So we want to open this file in read mode, and, in, uh, and, and we acknowledge that this is a, a binary file. So basically, that's it. So we can save this. And before stopping the video and trying this in the last 10 minutes, I have three messages for you. Um, four message, the last one. Uh, the first message is a um, correction, something that I told you uh, in a wrong way on the last Python lecture. I told you that to, you already probably experiment this in the lab, but I told you, and I was wrong, that to pass some parameter to a program file, you have to put the parameter in the interpreter option um, field in the configuration, obviously not, because you have a parameter field that is more suitable to get the parameters. So that is the, but you know, at 7 p.m. you should not, we all should not be here. But this is the first message. The second message is that we published today the, where is, the readings for Monday. So for Monday you have our readings, that is web architecture and technologies, um, that we don't need, we partially need a small, small portion during the, la the, the lecture on Monday, but then we will need that background uh, on Tuesday when you will do with Professor Corno, uh, the, you will start the web application part in Python. 
This web architecture and technologies is basically it's shorter than last time. Um, is there are some slides from the last edition of the course, and then there is a definition and overview on what is a client server paradigm. So if you already know this, you can probably just skip this. And something about the HTTP protocol, because we will use the HTTP protocol and you we will create a web application that rely on some concept from the HTTP protocol, especially the verb from the HTTP protocol. And then there is a brief introduction to HTML um, that you can also use to finish your deliverable number one that is due on su su Sunday, Sunday night. So this could be also helpful for your website. And then we have also here some additional material, basically the video lecture of that slides, the a short video of the what is the World Wide Web and the difference between the World Wide Web and the internet because the web and the internet are not the same thing, and another short explanation about HTTP. And this is the second message, the third and the fourth, also that is, you have to create, uh, yes, by today, by tomorrow, but probably Saturday or Sunday, it's, it's the same, um, the project website with deliverable number one <laughs> by the end of tomorrow. Um, we will not spend the weekend looking at your website, just to know. Um, so take this information at your will. Um, and then the last thing is that we, with respect to the previous edition of this, we just swap this hour. So on Monday, at two, third, two and third, mm, third uh, half past two, will be here with me again uh, to speak about Python databases in Python. And then we will go in Ladispe, where you will have the feedback on deliverable number one, and we will pass one group. Um, each group and provide dedicated feedback for each group separately. And so the other groups that are waiting for the feedback, we will, they can do the exercises, the Python intermediate exercises that is something related to what we did today in this lecture. So this this does this warp of hour. Before the lecture here, and then we then we will move at 4 p.m. in Ladispe to do the lab and receive the feedback on deliverable number one, so on the website. In this way, if we need, we can also, if some group needs more time to speak about the feedback, we can also remain slightly uh, more than 5.30, but we can remain a little bit longer with you to explain this, the problem, the, the, any feedback we will need to give you. Uh, so just this, this change. So now we can try we, the, this, on my computer, just to have uh, um, one way, but I will stop the registration.